prior to the having, we released a research report um, discussing about mining cell pressure. Uh, what's really interesting to us, and we felt like it was under communicated and discussed in the market, is that there's really three primary participants in the Bitcoin space. You've got your hodlers, you've got your funds, um, and you've got miners. For the most part, uh, hodlers and, and funds are long only. They, they buy Bitcoin, they're bullish, um, and they're typically always long only. Hodlers more so than the funds, you know, funds are actively managing more. But if you're involved in Bitcoin right now, typically long only. Now, miners are the most bullish of them all. They're, they're investing millions into ASIC hardware, electrical infrastructure, five-year energy contracts. So they're crazy bullish. They don't earn back their money typically for 18 to 24 months. They're investing in all this infrastructure and then they're, they're accumulating Bitcoin over time. Um, and it's actually an ex excellent strategy because they're, they're producing Bitcoin at a lower cost than to buy it on the open market. And the other critical point is their dollar cost averaging over the course of two to four years. And that's one of the best strategies you could have with Bitcoin. Your dollar cost average. Um, you know, you look at 2018 through 2019, Bitcoin's basically traded sideways or down. Um, if you've been hodling that whole time, you may have lost, likely lost money or, or you've made zero. Uh, miners have made, on average, probably 100, 150%. So in those sideways markets, a hodler, a fund, they make zero when Bitcoin starts at 10,000 and trades sideways for 10,000 for a few months. Um, miners continue making money and their dollar cost averaging. And that's what's really attractive. Um, you know, we, we ran an analysis when the S9, which is the old generation miner, um, when that came out in 2016, which is right before the halving, those that bought the S9 and, ha and have run it for the past four years, which has been the life cycle of the S9, now it's obsolete, but they got about four years out of it. Um, they actually outperformed holding Bitcoin back in the middle of 2016, they outperformed um, holding Bitcoin by 100%. And then the returns overall were about 30,000%, which is you know astronomical. We think all that's going to get reeled in as Bitcoin is, as Bitcoin has matured. But we're seeing a similar setup right now um, where we're starting a new hardware upgrade cycle with this next generation equipment. We believe we're in any one or two um, and and it's a great time to be a miner and to, and to deploy today because you're getting in the most efficient technology, the most efficient mining equipment, um, and you can dollar cost average over the next three to four years mining and accumulating Bitcoin. So that's something we think is, is really cool. So a lot of people are kind of, you know, the, the having happened, um, the first difficulty adjustment, we've had a 6% difficulty adjustment, which we expected you know, we, we really think a lot of the old generation equipment is going to become obsolete and we're seeing that. Uh, the immediate impact, the hash rate went down 30%. Uh, and that sounds scary and significant. But when you look at where the hash rate was at in May or uh, June of 2019, the hash rate is still up 60%. So the network is healthy. There's nothing for people to get um, concerned about. We're still up 60% on the hash rate year over year. It's excellent security. But right now, we're getting this healthy cleanse in the market post having where inefficient miners have to shut off. Um, they're, you know, 50% of the revenue has been slashed. So inefficient miners, they're no longer able to, to fund their operations and they have to get rid of old technology. The S9 is becoming obsolete. That is turning off. There's no longer, they no longer can participate in the arbitrage of, of producing Bitcoin at a lower cost than to buy it on the open market. And when that occurs, miners need to shut off. And that's what we're presently witnessing. And that's why after the halving, um, you know, the hash rate dropped about 25%. And now, and now we're seeing the impact in difficulty. Um, the first difficulty adjustment, uh, it, it, it uh, had a favorable adjustment by 6%. And now we're seeing the next difficulty adjustment, which should happen in about 13 or 14 days. Um, that will, that's estimated to, to uh, adjust about anywhere from 13 to 16%. So 
we'll see what happens there. There's there's other variables that could impact that. Um, if more miners continue to shut off, difficulty could adjust more favorably than what I'm estimating. If if miners are buying new equipment um, and they plug those machines in, then then that could reverse some of that shut off, right? Difficulty is truly just net machines plugged in, right? So machines plugged in, last machines uh, unplugged. So net machine uh, deployment, basically. That's what difficulty is. How much more hash rate is coming out of the network, uh, which is leading towards the time that blocks are mined. Blocks should be mined every 10 minutes. Um, and if it's getting mined quicker, then difficulty is going to increase, which is an unfavorable adjustment. And if mines are getting, uh, if blocks are getting mined uh, slower than 10 minutes, then difficulty will adjust favorably. And these adjustments happen every 2016 blocks, which typically equates to 14 days. So exciting stuff. That's what we're seeing right now. Um, and there's one more really cool variable out there that I think you know everyone's going to find interesting, and it's it's uh, the Chinese ra rainy season. Um, in China, you know the 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 capital of the mining market, um, the capital of the mining in the world is in is in the Sichuan province, uh, Chengdu, um, and and a lot of that mining is powered by hydroelectricity. So. When they have their rainy season, which starts in about a week, their electricity rates go down. So a lot more miners um, can turn on mining rigs over there, uh, and and that's going to happen in about a week. So we'll see how much hash rate goes up as a result of that, um, and how that's going to affect difficulty as well as the network hash rate. So that's a cool little um, variable that could affect difficulty and hash rate. And kind of counterbalance um, all the shutoffs. So we'll see how that how that impacts things.